Okay, so my name is Wolfgang and I have another video here on the beauties of Indian Dastoberi. This time I wanted to show some of the more advanced features, which is basically plate solving and the integration with another wonderful piece of software that is called Sky Safari. Have fun! As usual, I will start with a vanilla copy of the Astroberry server running on a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 GB of RAM. And first I would like to introduce Astrometrinet, that is a software suite for plate solving. And if you don't know about plate solving, you might want to read some of the literature on Astrometrinet, which can be found in this link. Shortly speaking, Plate solving means localizing your telescope by means of taking a photograph and finding out about the exact coordinates. After installation of the Astroberry server, you need to go to the documentation and we need to download the index files. That is the basic information about localization in Astrometrinet. And for this purpose, I will now open the Astroberry using my web interface. So I'm typing the IP address of the Astroberry into my browser. And by this means, I have now full access to KSTARS. And I'm starting ECOS here. ECOS is the scheduler of KSTARS, which we will use to demonstrate the possibilities that come with AstrometriNet. So we have to go to the Align tab, open the options. And first of all, I would like to introduce here a dedicated profile. Profile is called YouTube and Ecos needs a few things. It needs a camera. In this case, I have connected a simple Lazerta planetary cam that is basically a Toptec camera. And in order to use plate solving within ECOS, we also need to start an interface to a mount. In my case, this is the LX200 interface. And as said before, I also installed the Toptec. We need both of these devices because without a camera, ECOS doesn't work and without an interface to a mount, plate solving in ECOS does not work. So that's the situation in general here. And now I will install an additional feature. I will install an auxiliary driver that is called Astrometry. And Astrometry is not a device, it is a program, which is already installed in the Astroberry image. And now I can start ECOS and take a look at all the devices that are running in Indy. So I have here an interface to the camera, I have a connection to LX200, and you also see a tab here that reads Astrometry. You can do very little here, but as a matter of fact, we have now three drivers up and running, the one for the camera, the one for the mount, and the one for Astrometry, the program. What we have to do now is we have to download index files. So I went to this bullseye type of icon, and above all, I have now to go to the Options tab in the lower right corner, go to the Configuration, and set the location above all to this very important path, which we will have to keep in mind. This is the path where the index files are loaded to. You can see, you can, I can select it here. Let's keep that in mind. That's an important one. Home Astroberry dot local share K stars astrometry. And now as I have a connection to the internet, 
I'm downloading the index files. These are the files against which your image is about to be compared to. It depends on the field of view of your telescope and camera what you need. In general, it is said that you should go for about two to three times the size of the field. And as a lower limit, you should go to one tenth of the size of a field. So I'm downloading here most of those index files. And the smaller the field of view, the bigger the index files are, of course, because these are so to say, photographs which allow us to identify single patterns of stars. In general, astrometry finds out about quads, that is, pairs of four stars, and tries to identify the location of your image. This takes a while, this downloading, so this has to be done. And once it is done, you have, technically speaking, Everything available to run AstrometriNet. This is what the setup for AstrometriNet now looks in ECOS. You can sync onto a position once it is solved properly. You have to tell ECOS that you're using AstrometriNet offline. You have a set of possible commands that can be conveyed to the AstrometriNet program suite. And you should bin your images because too good a resolution is definitely not helpful for plate solving. The other information that needs to be given to ECOS is the focal length of the telescope you're using. This can be done, for instance, in the profile of ECOS. So you can choose your main scope if you're taking photographs through your main scope. And then it is possible to choose the driver, which is being used to control it, but above all, the focal length of this telescope. So the focal length needs to be entered, and the name for the telescope has to be given. What is being done here? And if this is being saved, the telescope is now known with its focal length to ECOS. This information is also fed to astrometry. The question is, how can you test this setup if you're not under dark skies? And the answer is that AstrometriNet is a software suite that is not directly dependent on Indie or ECOS. So you have downloaded all those index files and the index files as mentioned before are found in an internal path homeastroberry.locals share kstars astrometry if you copy this path then you can enter this information in the configuration file for astrometry you enter sudo nano, which is an editor, slash etc, slash astrometry config, and now you have a simple text editor available. And here you find a line which guides astrometry net to the path where the index files are found. So if you add the line add underscore path and the path to your index files, which you have stored before or where you downloaded the data, then you have, basically speaking, uh, astrometry available offline on your computer and you can start it from the terminal. I've done this here. Um, I took an image of the Medusa Nebula, which I shot a few weeks ago, and the command that is to be entered is a little bit complex and deserves more discussion because this is also the commands you can give to AstrometriNet in ECOS. So AstrometriNet is being involved by calling solve field. I'm giving the right ascension and the declination in decimal degrees by RA and DEC. I'm giving a search radius of 2 degrees with the command radius 2. 
I'm telling Astrometry to overwrite all files. The next command is scale units degree width. D DW is degrees. Scale low means the lower range of 0.1 degrees. Scale high of 1 degree is the field of view Astrometry Net takes into account. I'm telling Astrometry to downsample the input image by a factor of 4. And I'm applying this to my image of the Medusa Nebula. And what we can see is that if we give very precise information to Astrometry, it works very quickly, actually. It's also possible to verify this if you take the found coordinates and you enter them in K stars as a manual enter with the proper equinox, of course. Then we will see that actually K stars also points at the Medusa nebula. So astrometry simply works and is a very, very useful tool for all kinds of astrophotography, mosaicing, aligning your scope, and so on. Okay, so that is one nice uh, auxiliary um, tool in ECOS. And the other one I would like to show is connecting ECOS to Sky Safari, which is a wonderful program for display on a tablet and is a nice add-on. And here I log in again into the AstroBerry via my browser. I'm connected to a local network that is spawned by my controller. And if you don't know this setup, so if your AstroBerry is not in hotspot mode, you can find out about the IP address assigned to you by using the command ifconfig. I've done this before, so I do already know my IP address, and I start again KSTARS. Once KSTARS is started, I can start up the Indie servers. And as I want to control a telescope, first of all, I need to instantiate an interface to LX200, because that's the mount control protocol I use. My mount controller, which is a home-built project actually, connects via a Wi-Fi, so I have to enter the appropriate IP address and the appropriate port. And now I have Alex 200 up and running. I can control my telescope. I can find the topical location of the telescope. And I can issue motion commands and sync commands as usual. The next step now is that I am also starting the Indie driver for Sky Safari. So while my telescope is moving right now to the south horizon, I search for Sky Safari in the auxiliary devices. So here we have this one now. First of all, we have to make sure that the client knows which kind of protocol we are using. So I'm using the LX200 basic driver here, and I have to make sure that this is also known to the Sky Safari driver. I save this setting, of course. And now everything is ready to connect 
Sky Safari Tuma Telescope Driver via a second port, which is a 9000-something port as displayed here. I cannot see it properly right now, actually. Now I'm switching to Sky Safari. I connect my iPad running Sky Safari Plus or Pro also into the Wi-Fi network of my controller. And I have to use uh, Sky Safari Plus or Pro because I need the controller interface. The IP address is the IP address of the Astroberry and the port is set to the port that was indicated in the Indy driver. I have to use the Meet Alex 200 GPS interface and it's also necessary to increase the timeout to at least 5 seconds. Once you've done this, you have to wait for almost 20 or 30 seconds. I've abbreviated this procedure here a little bit. And then you see the position of your telescope after a connect indicated in Sky Safari. So now you have a second interface to your telescope at your hands. Whatever you do in K-Stars to move the telescope is being reflected as a motion in Sky Safari and vice versa it's also possible to issue commands like an alignment command in Sky Safari and this is also reflected back in K-Stars. So there's a few things that don't work. Direction buttons don't work, at least not with the LX200 basic driver. I don't know why. But as a matter of fact, this is really a very, very nice portable add-on for, let's say, use with bigger telescopes where you don't have a monitor at hand.